And a splendid morning to you and top of the week indeed. This is Newsline. We're live as usual from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Clambo. And today is the closing date for the seventh presidential election nominees to be to hand in their applications to the Elections Commission in Colombo. And uh, to discuss the events surrounding that, we've got uh, the news editor of the island newspaper, Mr. Shamin Ferdinando, joining us right here in the studio. Very good morning to you, Mr. Ferdinando. Good morning, Faraz. So it's the seventh, isn't it? I think yes. it is. Seventh presidential election. And uh, the nominees, uh, nominations close when? At what time do they close today? It's between 9 to 11 a.m. Only? That's it? 11 o'clock? Were they open yesterday then? No, it's only today for us. Nominations right. and objections both today. All inside this two, uh, two hours? Within two hours, yes. Right. But they've been open since about two weeks ago now, haven't they? You could have no, done it. No, no, for us. No. The, the, the the hopefuls paid uh, the deposits. deposits, but the actual thing it's today. Also, oh, there'll be absolute chaos there in battle. Chaos yeah. for us, of course, for the past so many years, <laughs> it's chaos. But totally chaos. chaos this morning. Yeah, you know, last week uh, we covered a press conference where the chairman of the elections commission, uh, Mahinda Deshapriya. Yeah declared this election uh, would cost uh, as much as 5,000 million rupees. Right. Unbelievable. I mean, I, sometimes I feel it's a waste of time, you know, to elect a person. Uh, who, I mean, after the election, all these political parties, those who have been in power over the past several decades, mm. in this country. And uh, how much did... Yeah. But... Honestly, today we, we 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 the battle, the continuous battle, to encourage good governance, to encourage accountability, to encourage responsibility, individual, collective, and several. The battle goes on, so we I don't think we need we we can have that in the back of our mind. But tell me, what's going to happen inside these two hours? I mean, there are forty-one people. For us, uh, I think Nagananda uh, Kodituakku, yes, uh, who declared uh, his intention to contest presidential election, he was the first actually. Yes. Uh, now he alleges that a section of the civil society uh, sabotaged his effort to contest election. I think no, that's that, a very that's serious charge. I think if you can tell us that in in brief. Tell me how that came about. Why did he? Why was he unable to go and uh, give his nomination? Uh, for us, uh, in accordance with our system, the, I mean the rules and regulations, uh, independent candidates have to contest through uh, a registered political party. Well, even if I'm, you know, if I was a peanut farmer from down south, and I, I had until now. I had no political designs and until I feel so badly and I say, right, no, I'm going to contest. Then what's, what's the rule? I'm completely apolitical. Uh, for us, uh, unless you are in politics, I mean active politics for four years. What, at what least, constitutes active politics? For us, you have to have press conferences, you know, some sort of a campaign, some public meetings. Unless uh, you have four years you cannot register How a political do you begin party. How to prove your involvement in politics? Yeah, I mean, uh, the television show, shows, media okay, reports yeah, so like media that. Media reports. Okay, so so if you don't have so, four years' experience, and Kulitaku came into the fray around 2017. 2017, so he cannot. I mean, I asked him and he told me that, he's, that he could not register a political party. Because... Well, he didn't need. He needed a political. He could have registered his own, but to do that, he would have needed four years, four years of political experience. In, he didn't have that. He never. Therefore, therefore, Mr. Mahinda Deshapriya, who is the chairman of the Elections Commission, yeah. advised Nagananda Kodituaku to contest through, through another a, through an, a party through a party through one that is previously been registered. Yes. And that's and that party, a previously registered party, can nominate 
whoever they want, whether the person's never seen or heard the word politics, Definitely. can come in as a nominee. Yes. Right? Okay, we, we're clear so far. I am. And, and uh, for us, you know, the interesting thing is, although there was no financial transaction involved in this particular case, yeah. Nagananda Kodito acknowledges some dormant political parties yeah. demand as much as 30 million rupees to allow a person to contest uh, so on its ticket. key money. It's the key money. And for us, you know, the corruption at that level, now the Elections Commission is talking about removing posters, uh, banners, and, you know, various restrictions yeah. imposed on political parties. Mm. Whereas, the campaign begins with massive corruption, unbelievable situation in this country. Right? So, I think uh, the Elections Commission may... Perhaps the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka should inquire into this. Hmm. Good story there. Yes, definitely. I, so, so minus I hope, talk. I hope uh, TV1 and Series of both will follow up this story. I'm sure we will, because that's what we do. We follow the news. And we don't just broadcast the news. We go to extraordinary lengths and challenges sometimes to explain the news. So... We believe that that is the way it's done. Now then, so minus uh, the unfortunate Kodituaku, uh, we've got, what, 40 candidates now? 40 or 41. Yes. Uh, some of them, I believe, What's the are proxy. What's the deposit proxy. Like? I'm not sure for us. I think it's uh, 75,000. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm Do you ever sure. get the deposit back? Well, in very nature of the word, deposit, I suppose. It's some lose. Some lose, I think. Oh, because you have to get X uh, amount of votes. Yes, I think Right, so. okay. Now then, <clears throat> the main candidates, well, which the, the, let's call them the prominent candidates, shall we? Anur Kumar Disanayaka, Gotabi Rajapaksa, Sajid Premadasa. Um, the main, the sort of mainstream ones, if you like. Yes. Uh, who are the other, sir? No, they're all important, but who are the others that come to your mind? number of others for us. A former MP, Mr. Milroy Fernando, yeah. is one. Then uh, former Speaker Chama Rajapaksa also paid deposit, but I think uh, that was on the instructions of the SLPP because they feared that uh, Gotabi Rajapaksa was going to lose have the opportunity. Have, have uh, challenges on his citizenship Yes, issue. so... Okay. So like that, there are what, 40, there's two monks also. Among them are two monks, okay. one lady. So, uh, but it's, uh, it's a battle between uh, the, the UMP deputy leader, Sajid Premadasa, and the SLPP candidate, uh, Kotabi Rajapaksa. Uh, both, uh, uh, and they are backed by strong political parties, mm. political forces. So, we'll have to see how they overcome the challenges because it's going to be a crucial ele election for this. Uh, Let's country. find out from our, from the public. Let's from our uh, dear, beloved um, viewers. Do send us your questions by SMS only, please. And please don't try and phone the number. 0772-300-305. Our control room's putting a card up on your screen as we speak. And, of course, we are in conversation with Shabindra Ferdinando, the news editor of the island newspaper. Now then, Shabindra, the, what do you think the main thrust of each of these campaigns are? Because you, you find that um, Colombo is almost uh, not uh, in the fray anymore because both these can, both the, let's call them the mainstream, the SLPP and the UNP candidates, uh, um, find their support base out in non-urban areas? For us, because well, the, we, are, we are talking about a present election, so the entire country is one electorate. Yeah. So it, so it does not matter. And it's first past the post? No, I mean, 50. But you need, uh, the winning candidate must poll 50% of those who voted. Plus one. Plus one. Yes. So there well, are going to be a million tough, registered uh, voters. It's, it's going to be a tough fight for both parties. It's actually, 
I'm really happy because it's going to be the mother of all elections. Battles. Battles. But I tell you one thing for us, I think both political forces, the major, I mean the two major political powers, uh, they are depending on a very expensive advertising campaigns. I don't think they'll be able to deceive the people this time because people expect some real results, some answers well, to see your paper was contentious. Also, uh, the beneficiary of yes, I mean, uh, no, I mean, uh, advertising in the sense uh, for us, you know, people demand results. Now, you take the questions, the issues faced by our country, the national economy, mm. the Geneva issue, and we are a country unable to cope up with our own garbage, mm. right? We have allowed interested parties to import garbage mm. from the UK and other countries. Yeah. So, it's a very, very bad, a delicate situation. I think both political parties should address these issues. Just trying to deceive the electorate, again, it won't But, do. you know, uh, all this is very... All, all well and good, but if we are to believe everything that these that has been spewed forth from the parliament, if we are to believe that, then this country is in serious trouble. We apparently we borrowed so much money that we we don't have enough income to pay to service those loans, and the cost of living is going up, up and up and up. Um, even though there were one million new jobs promised. Uh, figures from the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, uh, compiled obviously by the National Census people, uh, reveal that in the public sector, instead of having an increase, we've actually had 440,000 people less than what it, they promised. So, the, the, it's, you know, if it wasn't so serious, it would make a pretty good joke. One million new jobs, and all these fancy and grandiose plans, and within few kilometers out of a super duper, all singing, all dancing, but empty highways in Hambantota, we've got people living in trees because of the human elephant conflict. Right? We've got as Gamada has discovered, we've got a vast tranche of people in this country. For want of a better word, they are the forgotten people. And its, peop and its programs, movements like the Gamada movement, who go out there and who have discovered these things. So what's happened? What, what has led to this sort of, I don't care, or... I'm okay, and therefore everything must be okay, attitude. No, for us, I think, if uh, the elected representatives uh, of this country, those who are in parliament, do their job, I don't think uh, the civil society and private organizations have to play a significant role in anything. Unfortunately, uh, for want of uh, comprehensive you know, action plan by the government in power, and the previous government too. I mean, successive government. Successive government, government yeah. because it's not it's One been an accumulation of yes. uh, troubles, hasn't it? So, uh, I mean, the systems have failed, obviously. So, uh, the so the people are suffering. I mean, those who are unable to make ends meet are forced to pay taxes and more taxes, right? And uh, the elected representatives, uh, I don't think they are really keen. Uh, to 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 address these issues, right? Now, see, I went to the, the health sector, today. the health sector in turmoil, the trains on strike, right? Take every sector. Who's behind all these strikes? Uh, the UMP alleges uh, the SLPP is behind, and mm -hmm. that's an accusation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the I mean, I must. Um, we have seen over the past several decades, at the time of elections, the opposition always uh, causes trouble. Mm. Right. It's so, almost a tool. Definitely for us. Mm. There's no doubt about it. Mm. It's a tool. So, uh, uh, it, it, it's actually not only the presidential election, I think you should take uh, both presidential and parliament posts together 
and, and see how those who are elected can serve the people. Right. It's a, it's a very um, uh, sad um, situation when people who are elected don't actually deliver what they are elected to do. Now, the, the one thing and, and, about... And, 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 and uh, I must tell you for us now, see how the system works now. On Naganand, there is just a section of the civil society. Yeah. Sabotage is bit. Yeah. And again, the other allegation, yeah. uh, civil society again, yeah. Uh, say a different lot, yeah. they moved the court of appeal in a bid to disqualify the former defense secretary. Yeah. Right? And the accusation was, you know, it's really funny that uh, he was a national security threat yeah. and his election would pose a serious threat to Sri Lanka's national security. Here, a person who survived an LTT suicide attack yeah. and who and who spearheaded uh, the security but, operation yeah. against uh, the LTT yeah. along with uh, General Sarat Fonseca, Karan Nagoda, all these senior people. So, something wrong uh, in our system for yeah, us. Yeah, though, not to take anything away from uh, Gotabi Rajapaksa as uh, the Defence Secretary, uh, or indeed um, uh, then Commander uh, Sarat Fonseca, nothing, not to take anything away from anyone. But, the law is the law. Procedure is procedure. Definitely. And if you've, you know, for whatever reason, if you haven't got it right, then then you can't, you know, if you're out of the law, then that's it. You can't contest or you can't do whatever it is. Yes. So we must respect that bit. But, in fact, if it was so obvious, then the Court of Appeal sh wouldn't have entertained, uh, you know, um, the case to anyway. But, they, they, they obviously must have felt that there's some, some merit, which is why they decided no, the to look into the Court of it. Appeal simply dismissed the case. Yes, but uh, the fact that they even heard it, surely there must be some system. No, there's, of course, the both parties made representations before the court. Yeah. And the court decided, ruled, that there's no case. Right. But anyway, that, that's behind us now. Yeah. Um, okay. We've got... Uh, Huge amount of questions. I don't know where to start. Um, here we go. Let's take one, shall we? Uh, Rajita Senrat's statement, JVP going to courts against Gota, was refuted by the JVP. Now, will Senratna, on behalf of the UNP, file a case in Gota's dual citizenship? What do you think? Actually, for us, uh, before uh, the action was taken against, uh, I mean, before the, uh, the Court of Appeal, was yeah. moved against uh, the former defense secretary, uh, the civil society consulted the UMP. I mean, the civil society initially tried to, uh, you know, their plan uh, was to feel uh, Speaker Karu Jai Suri as a personal candidate mm -hmm. uh, at the expense of uh, Sajid Premadasa. And uh, Sajid Premadasa had the support of uh, the vast majority of the parliamentary group and both in Colombo and the provinces, but the civil society made that attempt uh, to 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 uh, feel uh, bring in uh, Mr. Karu mm -hmm. So having failed, uh, they still moved the court of appeal against Gota Rajapaksa. Political chicanery, then. Okay, here you go. Thank you for all these questions. By the way, keep sending them. Zero double seven two three hundred three zero five card coming up and, on and, your screen. And, and for us, uh, I must also point out that although uh, Minister Rajiv Sena Ratna said that the JP would move court, yeah. all the other UMP MPs, people like uh, Harin Fernando, then uh, Mr. Uh, Manu Chananakar, yeah. number of lawmakers, uh, UMP lawmakers, they said that uh, they wanted to face Gotabi Rajapaksa because he the easiest person to defeat. Right. So, I cannot understand why they got the civil society to move the court of appeal. Maybe it's like all of these people, uh, you know, uh, in politics, you do find um, <laughs> quite often yes. that they speak with not only with a forked tongue, but with several forked tongues, as in plural. Will Shamindra Shamindra Fernando agree that the next president will be far less powerful than now? For example, he won't be heading a ministerial portfolio. Largely ceremonial role? Not 
largely ceremonial role, but his right, his 100 percent right, uh, they have implemented the 19th Amendment to the Constitution uh, in early 2015 and uh, as a result, of course, uh, the President uh, will not uh, enjoy the powers enjoyed by the previous Presidents. Right. China, in spite of all the criticism from Western democracies, has lifted 850 million out of poverty. Don't they have a better democracy than us? Question. Uh, they have a uh, their political party system. Uh, I don't like it for us. Mm. It's only one political party. I think we should have more political parties. But uh, I admire the Chinese system. Mm. They have, uh, you know, they have lifted the country. A tremendous improvement. Now a superpower. And they are challenging, the, uh, they are taking on the U.S. also. Uh, Let's get local. What happens if one contestant gets the highest but does not get more than 50% plus, you know, 50% plus one? They'll have to count the second vote. What does that mean? The preference for us. That's why, you know, recently the LSSP, one section of the LSSP, uh, the percent, uh, Dr. Dr. Jayampati Vikramaratna, yeah. he's a member of that group. They urged their supporters to vote for Andhra Kumar Desa Nayaka and to give the second preference to the strongest candidate who could defeat Gotabe Rajapaksa. They did not mention name, uh, Sajid Premadasa's name, but obviously they wanted uh, their supporters to vote for Andhra Kumar Rishanayaka and give the second preference to Sajid Premadasa. Mm -hmm. and, and that is their right. So what happens? So they, they then look at the preferences, the yes. second preferences. Yes. Whose second preferences do they count? Is it the first two or beyond? They have a system for us. I'm, right. I'm not exactly sure of the system, but... Uh, Mr. Mahindra Deshapriya explained it several times. Right. So there's no issue there. But I think yeah. one person, that Sajid Premadasa or Gotabe Rajapaksa, yeah. one of them will definitely get the required uh, number of votes. One of them. What are the possibilities of Gotabe Rajapaksa, candidate Rajapaksa, being challenged again, this time round in the Supreme Court on the citizenship issue? or such objections being upheld by the Election Commission? The Elections Commission, we raised this issue with uh, Mr. Deshapriya and uh, Deshapriya very clearly said that they have to abide by rulings given by the Supreme Court, I mean the courts. Right. And uh, now the JVP has denied Rajasen Ratna's statement. When did Rajasen Ratna become the spokesperson of the JVP then? No, I think uh, for us, uh, I'm not sure. No, but I must tell you now, Minister Seyranaratna wouldn't have said that uh, without knowing certain things. Though the JP denied his statement, uh, now it was Minister Rajiv Seyranaratna who first announced uh, the move made by the civil society against Gotabi Rajabhaksa. So there's a <laughs> conflict there. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't comment on this because what do you mean? The, the JVP is a party on its own. You don't need rent a mouth. Uh, oh, you no, know, for, to, to, to for us, out, for yeah. us, don't forget. Uh, uh, in 2010 and 2015, both uh, president elections. Yeah. In 2010, they fielded General Fonseca. 2015, Maitri Palisade. Yeah. On yeah. both occasions, the yeah. JVP was part of the UMP dead coalition. Right. Though. Although the JP is contesting separate. They were also part of the coalition yes. that brought in Mahindra Rajapaksa in 2005. Yes, that's true. But subsequently, after the war, things changed. Yeah. So 2010 and 2015, on both occasions, the JP was part of the UMP led coalition. Right. So, so, so the, I mean, although the JP is contesting, they have fielded their own candidate yeah. through a civil society grouping, I'm sure there's some sort of uh, connection, uh, you know. They are working together. I mean, according to Raja Siraratha, otherwise, uh, how could he say that? What about Mr. Rajapaksa's U.S. citizenship? Has he overcome the issue? Uh, yes, in April this year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if any, actually, if anyone is going to be taking action, shouldn't it have been the Elections Commissioner? 
Why, why somebody else? Why members of the public? Yeah, now today, between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., the UNP, the JVP, or any political party, Which, or independent he, group he, contesting he, this time, yeah. they, can, they can object. Shaminda, uh, two hours is 120 minutes, okay? Yeah. There's 40 candidates. Even if you entertain these fellows only three minutes each, you're done. For you're us, you're done with the two hours. I'm not sure for us, but I think some of these candidates, those who paid the deposit, yeah. will not contest. Okay. So I don't think all 41 or 43 will come today. I don't think. But we will not come. Definitely yeah. not. Have you got inside information about that? Pardon? What? Have you got inside information that? Dear Chamal isn't going to contest. No, for us, uh, they feel that Chamal, Chamal Rajapaksa paid deposit because they feel. Was it Plan B? Plan B, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so you think that the okay? Here we go. Another question. We'll take that very quickly. Can you explain the fifty percent plus one? Well, I think we've done that, haven't we? Yes. We've yes. done that. We've done it. You you need fifty percent of the all those people who voted, plus one, one vote. It's like having the golden share in a business, isn't it? Uh, uh, he can access the Elections Commission website. You, file, you will find all the information there for us. The Elections Commission's website will have all the information. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the questions. And here we go. Uh, this, we take this as the last question, but do send them in anyway, because we can take them in on Talk of the Town, which is broadcast on uh, SFM. Um, and uh, which is our one of our channels from the uh, Maharaja's table of uh, media assets. Good morning, Mr. Shaminja. Um, we like the program. Thank you. Please make it for one hour. Oh, goodness me. Right. Uh, thank you. But this is not a question for you. This is a question for uh, control rules and request others. to your organization. Yes, to our organization. I, I'll pass it on. Thank you very much. Now then, I'm not, I don't suppose it will be fair to ask you where you're going to vote. But I can ask you this, as citizen Ferdinando, talking to citizen me, can you tell me, is there one single item that you will be focusing on before saying, I like that plan, I'm going to therefore vote for that person? Which, what, what is it? Is it the economy? Is it, well, I don't know, is it the price of coconuts? It's the national economy for us. Right. The national economy. I think both political parties, the major two major political parties, should address uh, this issue. It's the most important issue in addition to security, whatever. Right. The national economy is the most important issue. And I sincerely hope the next president yeah. will take tangible measures to discipline the parliament. I think the Parliament today is the problem in this country. Mm. We are 225 people behave the way they want. Largely, to. largely. I think almost all for us because recently. But not my, uh, but not uh, some people. No, for some us, people are uh, for us recently, Prime Minister Vikram Singh told a public gathering. He he was uh, addressing the people in Sinhalese. Uh, he said. Parliament to a city that they say visipas denam janatava pilikul karna. What does that mean? So, no, the Pilitur, pli what does that uh, mean? Pilikul means, you know, people hate them, people don't like them. So, he included himself. He included himself. Yes, well, that, that, that's, that, that, that's the wonderful yeah. thing about Mr. Vikram Singh. He has that almost uh, Westminster style um, uh, ability to laugh at oneself, which yeah. is probably one of the reasons he's managed to hang on to dear life for the last 25 years as the leader of the party. Shavinder Ferdinando, it's been absolutely splendid having you on the program. Thank you very much. Um, I hope that uh, you will um, report uh, the facts from uh, the Elections Commission today so that we can read all about it tomorrow morning. And of course, you can follow all the news as it happens on News First, the only channel of choice if you want to keep up to date with the latest trending news. On that note, Shamindra, thank you very much. Thank you to everybody. And let's get the election show rolling, shall we? On that note, have a great week. Take care. And of course, God bless.
न्यूज फर्स्ट न्यूज लाइव विथ फराज शाहकुटाली